Welcome back, everyone. Here we are for lecture number 35. We're continuing our discussion of the nucleus. This is the nucleus part two. Okay. And just to review very quickly, we said that the nucleus was very, very densely packed, right? It's uh, within a diameter of 10 to the minus 15th of a meter. That's known as a Fermi. Okay. Uh, and we said inside the nucleus, we have protons with a plus charge and neutrons with a, a zero charge. And together, particles found in the nucleus are called nucleons. OK, keep that in mind. Nucleons are any object found inside the nucleus. And there's two types, protons and neutrons. OK, now we're going to ask the question, why is the nucleus stable? OK, we have protons all have a positive charge and they hate each other. Remember, the electrons are in orbit, now a picture, and why are electrons in orbit around the nucleus? Why are they attracted? It's because of the Coulomb, the electric force, right? The electric force is very, very, very powerful. So the electric force of attraction between a plus and a minus. Now, imagine we have a very small space within the nucleus, okay? Within the nucleus, we have all these positive charges. What are the positive charges trying to do? They're trying to push apart. Right? Positive part charges hate each other. So the question is, how does the nucleus stay together? Why does the nucleus stay together? Okay? Excuse me. Now, inside the nucleus, nature, there's another force besides the gravitational force, which we learned about, and besides this electric force, which can be repulsive or attractive. The nuclear force is an attractive force that acts only within the, the nucleus. The nuclear force, also called the strong force, only acts within the nucleus. And it's like the strong man in the circus. What do I mean by that? If you've ever seen a cartoon with the strong man with the big arms and a big mustache, right? They got super strong. Anything they grab, they can hold on to. The problem is the arms are very small. And the problem with the nuclear force is it only acts within the nucleus. The nuclear force only acts within the nucleus. It's a very short range. So the nuclear force is the strongest force in the universe, but it has a very short range. And so we want to get protons close enough so that the nuclear force can keep them together. And we'll get to that in a couple minutes. All right, <clears throat> nuclear force, strongest force in nature, very short range, again, keeping nucleons together. Neutrons are like a nuclear glue. While the protons are trying to push apart, the neutrons and the protons, the protons also, but the neutrons feel the nuclear attraction. The neutrons feel no repulsion. So neutrons are like a nuclear glue. You need neutrons inside a nucleus to keep it together. So neutrons are a nuclear glue trying to keep things together. The protons also feel an, uh, a nuclear attraction. But remember, they're still trying to repel because of the electric force. So the question is, how can we get these protons close enough so the nuclear force can keep things bound? Now, that's a problem. We'll get to that again. So how do you and I form? How does matter form? Uh, first, let's talk about isotopes, okay? Many of you have heard of isotopes. What are isotopes? Isotopes are elements that have the same number of protons. If they have the same number of protons, remember, it's the same element. What is the identity of an element uh, 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 determined by? It's determined by the number of protons, not the number of neutrons. So an isotope is a nucleus, nuclei that have the same number of protons, different number of neutrons. OK, and so since they have the same number of protons, these types of atoms would be electrically neutral. They'd have the same number of electrons. So isotopes of an element would have the same chemical properties. The number of neutrons does not affect the chemical properties. We'll get to that later on. So here's some isotopes of hydrogen. What makes hydrogen hydrogen? One proton. If you have one proton in your nucleus, by definition, you are hydrogen once again. The identity of an element is determined by the number of protons. If you have two protons, again, your helium, three protons, lithium, and so forth. Okay? So here's the isotopes of hydrogen. Ignore the electrons. We're just looking at the nucleus. Okay? So 1H, there's a proton, just a proton. That's what we call hydrogen, just a proton. Well, here's an isotope of, of, of hydrogen. We have one proton, two nucleons. Here we have one proton, one nucleon. One proton, two nucleons. Okay, this is called deuterium. 
One proton, it's hydrogen. It's an isotope of hydrogen. One neutron, it's called deuterium. One proton, still hydrogen. Two neutrons, now it's called tritium. Okay, one proton, three nucleons. How can you determine the number of neutrons when you have this? Subtract the number of protons from the number of nucleons, and you have the number of neutrons. Very simple. Number of protons plus the number of neutrons equals the number of nucleons. Okay, so these are some of the isotopes of hydrogen. Now, let's talk about where you and I came from, okay? So let's go back maybe 13 point something, 4 billion years ago when the universe began, or so we think, okay? What was the universe made of? Well, I'm going to do some erasing here, okay? What was the universe? Well, the simplest thing in the beginning, the simplest form of matter, we believe were the isotopes of hydrogen, okay? Now, imagine you have all this hydrogen floating around, early universe. Eventually, what's gonna happen? Well, eventually what's gonna happen is the very patient, very weak, but very patient gravitational force is gonna pull all this hydrogen together. So let's talk about this. Do you remember when we did the diver problem? You remember all the energy was potential, and as the diver fell, the potential energy decreased while the kinetic energy goes up. So what happens to this cloud or gas of hydrogen isotopes? What happens is as it collapses, pulls together, the potential energy, the gravitational potential energy, goes down, just like the diver. The potential energy decreases. So if the energy decreases, where does that potential energy go? Well, just like for the diver when she moved uh, faster, as these hydrogen molecules, hydrogen isotopes collapse, the kinetic energy increases. So the particles start moving faster and faster. Okay. Now, if you remember from thermodynamics, Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy, temperature on the Kelvin scale. So as this gas cloud of hydrogen isotopes collapses, what happens? Well, the potential energy decreases, the kinetic energy increases, the particles move faster, the temperature goes up, and the temperature goes up so high, it goes up to 10 to 100 million degrees, okay? Celsius, Fahrenheit, it doesn't matter at that level, okay? So uh, about 100 million degrees, the particles come and what does that mean it means the isotopes of hydrogen are moving really really fast now suppose you take hydrogen nucleus doesn't matter which one another hydrogen nucleus and you try to put them together they push apart why why do they push apart because they're made of protons forget the neutrons for now the protons repel and repel and repel so how can you get these close enough together so that strong nuclear force keeps it together? Well, the answer is you smash them together at 100 million degrees. So potential energy gets converted to kinetic energy. These particles smash together. And if they get close enough, the nuclear force can keep them together. So let's see what we get. Suppose we take a deuterium, okay? Deuterium, one, two, one, right? So two H one, okay? One proton, one proton. Suppose I take that and I add it to another one. Okay. Suppose I could smash these together. Well, if we just add the top, two plus two, we get four. One plus one gives two. That means whatever this object is has two protons. Well, the only thing that has two protons inside the nucleus is helium. So we just made a helium nucleus. We combined two hydrogens and we made a helium, a helium-4 nucleus, okay? Also, as we'll see, called an alpha particle. Now, let's look at this. Suppose I take a helium-4, oops, add a helium-4, and add a helium-4. Suppose now I'm making these heliums and now I smash three heliums together because it's in this cloud at 100 million degrees. What happens? Well, again, we can do the math. We can add the top. Four plus four plus four is 12 nucleons. Two plus two plus two is six protons. And what element has six protons? Well, if we go to Mendeleev's periodic table, we find that this is carbon. So we've just made carbon. Okay, what we are doing is we're making elements. This is called 
nucleo synthesis, right? To make synthesis. Nucleosynthesis. And this process of nucleosynthesis is really what, again, we'll cover this later, is called nuclear fusion. So we're fusing nuclei together. So if you combine carbons and combine carbons with deuteriums or with heliums, what you do is you start making lithium, potassium, oxygen, nitrogen, and so forth. What is this structure that's making all these elements, that's at a, this ball of very hot gas uh, making all these elements? Well, the temperature is about 110 to 100 million degrees. This is what we call a star. So a star our star, the sun, and all the stars are undergoing nucleosynthesis. The energy process is nuclear fusion. And what's happening is the periodic table is being made. Oxygen, nitrogen, potassium, chlorine, fluorine, argon, okay? Now, what happens to everything? Well, again, back to thermodynamics, we learn that everything, entropy, eventually dies. So eventually a star will die. Okay? And if the star is big enough, it can go into a nova or supernova state. And let's imagine the star explodes. Watch. No sound in outer space. There's no sound in outer space. Sound needs a medium. So you always see these, you know, uh, science fiction movies, and they show stars or spaceships exploding in space. <laughs> no, spaceships go no sound in outer space. So imagine the star novas or supernovas and blows up. And what does it do? It puts out all these particles that it made. What particles? It made potassium and lithium and chlorine and oxygen and nitrogen and fluorine and argon and uranium. Oh, not uranium. All these, all these elements. And now you have a gas of all these elements floating in outer space for hundreds of millions of years. Once again, the most patient force in the universe is gravity. And what does it do? Gravity pulls all these particles that were made in the star, pulls them together to form a clump. And what is this clump called? The Earth. So where did the Earth come from? The Earth came from the coalescing, the coming together of particles that were created in a star. So when people say we are stardust, we are stardust. Every atom in our body was made in a star. Some might have been made in different stars. So every time you see the sun, wave because you're related to the sun because, again, all our elements are made in the stars. Okay, so if you could talk to the atoms in your body, the chlorine, the oxygen, the nitrogen, and everything in your body was made in a star billions of years ago. Okay, so we are stardust. We are golden. All right. And that's how we came about. So things fuse together. Now, when you put things together, they don't necessarily have to be stable. And so the next thing we're going to talk about is instability of the nucleus. When a nucleus is unstable, we call that radioactivity. Now, what that means is radioactivity or instability, instability means it's not in its lowest energy state. So if I try to balance this marker, eventually it will fall. Now, if we listened closely, when it fell, it would give off energy, lose energy, go down to a lower energy state, give off energy. When a nucleus forms, if it's formed unstable, eventually, and we'll talk about half-lives, eventually it's going to fall or go to a lower energy state. If something goes to a lower energy state, energy must be given off, and that's going to be radioactivity. Okay, so in the next lecture, we're going to talk about radioactivity, we're going to talk about half-lives and uh, different particles that can be emitted from a nucleus in trying to go to its lowest energy state. In the meantime, go outside if it's sunny and wave to the sun because remember, we are stardust. Okay, so every atom in your body was made in a star. Okay, I'll see you next time and we'll talk about radioactivity. Be safe.